Spring is a time for new beginnings and new growth. The weather is warming up again and it's a lovely sight to see the flowers and leaves regrow on the trees. This is also the time to start seeds in preparation for the garden. In the first few years of gardening, I would organize my seeds according to the season and follow the sowing instructions on the seed packets. Starting plants from seeds is a great way to try out rare and different varieties of vegetables, flowers, and herbs that you won't be able to get from the local nursery. There are many different methods for starting seedlings. By using a seed starting mix from the store, mixing your own, or using any medium that you have on hand. A seed starting mix is used to maximize seed germination rate and to encourage new root growth. This is coconut core, a byproduct from coconut processing. See how fine, fluffy, and airy the medium is? It allows seeds to easily germinate and develop new roots. I add in vermiculite and earthworm castings to create a mixture that will retain moisture and provide nutrients to the plants. You can also use perlite or a compost mixture in addition or as an alternative for the mix. I have seen many recipe variations for seed starting mix. This is my first time creating and trying my own mix and I'm learning as I go. When starting a small garden, I only use what I already have, such as empty cartons, paper rolls, and reusing containers from the nursery. As a beginner, it is best to start out small and be resourceful with what you have until you are ready and have the time to tend to a larger garden. Smaller containers such as this is great to germinate small seeds, but they can be tricky because the growing medium has to be kept moist or else the seedlings will dry out. These ranunculus corms have been soaked in water and they are plumped and ready for planting. We haven't set up our flower beds in the garden yet, so I'm packing all of the bulbs together in these containers. Some seeds, especially larger ones like beans, may germinate better when they are soaked in water before planting. And seeds that have a harder outer shell can benefit from being filed down. I haven't had any issues with these, but these steps can speed up the germination process. Whether the flowers are edible or not, I think it is just as important to grow them in the garden to attract beneficial insects and pollinators. Many of my plants from last year were in shock due to the change in temperature and weather conditions. The process of hardening the plants allowed them time to acclimate to the weather conditions about one or two weeks before they are planted in the ground.
In the morning, I would bring the seedlings outside for a few hours in the shade, and then gradually longer hours in the sun. It does take time to move them in and out, but I think it is worth it to let the seedlings adjust to the outdoor temperature. I also take this time to go through and pick which seedlings I want to keep for the garden beds as the strong and healthy ones will fare better against pests and diseases. My area gets windy in the late afternoon and the wind can be rough on the plants and strip them of moisture. I am taking my time with hardening them off so that they can grow big and strong. I think that starting plants from seeds is really a labor of love. I get to see the seeds sprout their first true leaves and after much care and tending their flowers will bloom. And then with time I can harvest the ripe fruits to enjoy. It is such a process that brings a lot of joy no matter how big or small the garden may be.